Are you interested in equestrian boot and saddle repair? If so, you found the right video, so stay tuned. Hi guys, thanks for joining me from my patio in Hawaii. If this video inspires you, be sure to check out the whole series of the Cobbler Masterclass. Welcome back and thanks for joining me. I'm Terry Edmonds. I'm a cobbler, a shoemaker, and an entrepreneur. I also happen to do a lot of equestrian repair. Wow, this, it's raining. It's so awesome working from my deck. I hope that if you're inspired to do the same, that you'll watch the rest of my Cobbler Masterclass series. Before I go further, I want to dedicate this video to Tandy Leather Factory. Most everything that I'm using here to accomplish these tasks, I got from Tandy Leather. But they're really about helping the community and teaching people new crafts. They have live videos, all kinds of free resources. As you can see here, I have a couple of saddles that I'll be demonstrating for you. Uh, today, we're going to do, for this saddle, we're going to repair a billet which is one of these straps here. This is one of my client's favorite saddles, as you can tell. And uh, these have worn out over time. So uh, we actually are gonna cut these, make a new pattern out of some nice leather here. And then I'm gonna uh, sky, hand sew them, dye them, the works. It's a really good skill to have because your equestrian clientele uh, wears through those. I get a lot of that repair. So it's a great one to learn. The other one that I'm going to demonstrate is going to be this saddle here. This is a beautiful saddle and uh, the client would like to keep it, but it is uh, ripping on these side creases. And I'm going to be patching that using, again, some nice uh, leather samples, just some leftovers. And I'll be dyeing them. We're going to skive them, glue them on. And uh, the client doesn't want it stitched right now, which I kind of agree. Um, besides, it's hard to stitch. You have to do a whole piece. So we're just going to patch it. And I, I get this a lot, usually in bigger rips. So this would be a great example for you to just kind of get a sense of what it takes to do that. There are a lot of supplies, it looks like, on this table to do these projects. And it may seem like it, but they're supplies that I use regularly in my studio. Uh, so basically starting first, I have this wonderful workshop kit from Tandy Leather Factory and I've done a whole video on it in this Cobbler Masters uh, series, but there's also, um, I use primarily every, you know, everything on this. Today we're going to be using a skiving tool. I'll be cutting the leather pieces, then I'll be skiving them to make them flush so that they set nicely together and the seams are almost invisible. I'm gonna glue them on. I'm gonna sand the leather, I'm gonna glue them together. And then I'm gonna go ahead, before I actually glue everything together, I'm gonna to dye them first. So I've got some dark brown leather dye. I buy the Angelus uh, leather dye. I like to put them in a jar. It makes it easier to get your paintbrush because the dyes come with a dauber, but I like to use a paintbrush because the different areas that you need it to get into, um, it all matters. So I like to have an assortment of brushes. I'm using a uh, Tandy uh, Leathers Craft Tool Scissors. These are fantastic. I use these in all of my classes that I teach. And also I'm using the plate. I'll be using a hammer. I like to condition all the leather before I start gluing it together so that it's really pliable. And so we'll be using my favorite Cadillac boot and shoe care. And then of course I have uh, some different types of leather. I'll be using these soft leathers to do the chaps. I'll be using this very thin, it's like a two ounce um, uh, cowhide, which is nice. I'll be using that for these real thin. I want this to be super thin. And for this one inside here, the billet, I'm gonna be using this really thick hide. Not this one, but this one here. Um, it's a pretty thick piece and it gets a lot of bending and wear. So we'll do that thick as well. So I think that's about it as far as supplies go. And I'm gonna measure where this rip is happening. The actual rip is about 
four and a half inches. So I'm going to try to make this patch. I think I'm going to go six. I think I'm going to go six inches. The trick here is to get this nice and smooth, really thin, so it lies flush. I like to clean up the edges. So I'm going to apply the dye first before I glue it. Once you put on glue, the dye won't go through. I'm using one of the sharp tools from my toolbox to trace out a pattern of where I'm going to apply the glue. I'm using a fine grit sandpaper and really taking my time just to remove this surface wax on this saddle. And again, just taking my time. So now we're applying the glue. I'm gonna glue both surfaces, the saddle and the strip of leather. I usually put glue pieces together after they've dried a bit. But for this, because I'm trying to be so accurate, I'm putting it together while it's wet. I'm pushing all of the edges down to make sure that there's glue on the entire surface. So I've waited about 20 minutes and I'm gonna press the pieces together. Even though I skived this leather on the other side, it still left me with some rough edges. So I'm using this edge beveler here just to take off the um, hard surfaces before I use my sanding paper. I'm going to finally sand the edges of this down. I use a lot of these emery boards. They're a staple in my workshop.
So here we are at the last step. I'm applying some uh, Lincoln stain wax, uh, which is really nice with this brush and I'll polish it in. It'll protect it. It adds a little bit of color. And of course the uh, buffing of it makes it shine nicely for the client. Okay, let's measure our patch size. I'm using my sharp tool again just to make the marks in the leather so that I don't have pen marks later. So I'm really careful about using my uh, razor knife taking my time, there's no need to rush, and I use my razor knife a lot and I've never uh, injured myself, so uh, heed my caution on that. Take your time and just be careful. I'm going to make this cut and I always suggest thinking it through before you do it. Make sure you've got the right spot. Just making a couple of marks here with my same sharp tool, uh, it makes it easy to cut later. So I always do a little uh, double check, make sure that it's the right length and that I've got the right spot. And I'm also going to be skiving these, so I'm making the marks as to where I'm going to uh, put the skive. So again, I'm using my razor knife on this because it's really thick leather and because of the angle. Um, I, I, as you can see, I have to position the knife in such a way that I can get in there and really take off uh, the meat of that leather. I'm doing the same on the other side and these two are going to uh, blend nice and smoothly. After I use the razor knife, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use my skiver and that'll make it a more smooth, polished uh, look professional look. And I really like my uh, cutting board there from Tandy. It's such a great tool. I got the Skyver from Tandy as well. I'm using this belt punch. It's awesome. It gives me the perfect curve at the tip of this uh, billet. Okay, awesome. Let's apply some dye. This is the fun part of the job. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and uh, make our whole pattern. It looks like we've got a great fit here, which is really nice. And I've, of course, saved the old piece so that I know exactly where to put my marks. This is the hole punch and pad from my Craft Tool Pro uh, workshop. So in this one here, I am going to apply the glue to both sides and I'm going to let them dry before I put them together. This is one of those instances where they don't have to uh, 
be put together wet. It's been about 20 minutes and the glue's nice and tacky, so it's, it'll hold really well, which is great because I'm gonna punch holes in here, so I want it to be uh, affixed. Okay, so yet again, I'm using another tool from my workshop that I got from Tandy. Uh, this is a great four prong hole punch. Um, the leather's pretty thick, so um, it's nice to have this sharp tool. I'll be pushing through a pretty big needle, so I selected a tool that had a pretty big prong on it. Um, so it was super fun. And I'll just start in one spot here, come up from the inside, and we'll go through here as well. It's really easy for myself, leave some room. I've stitched all the way around up to the top here and I've come through and I'm going to tie these two pieces off now. Nice and tight. to hammer down. Okay, wow, that was a lot of fun. It took a lot longer than I expected for sure, especially this one here on the patches. I really felt like in the end that I needed to um, round off the edges up here because of the client, you know, writing it and moving on it. Now it's just nice and smooth. You know, it took a little less time.
fine, but that's okay. You saw I used a uh, fingernail file, a rough one, that's really good. And uh, this one was super easy doing the uh, hand punches and the hand stitching. That's what's really cool about hand stitching is it can work on so many things. Tied a good knot, dyed the leather, uh, everything is conditioned, so that's really great. So thanks for joining me again, and remember to subscribe, watch the rest of the series if you're inspired, and uh, thanks so much for sharing. And from Maui,